Hi y'all. Today's video is going to be 15 tips to improve your pet photography. Those of us who love our animals want the best pictures that we can get and we don't always know how to go about that, but there's some simple things you can do to get the best image of your four-legged friend or your feathered friend, scaly friend, whatever kind of pet you have. These tips will apply. Stick around. Tip number one, dress for comfort. You're gonna be getting down on your pet's level. You're gonna be playing with them, rolling around on the ground, maybe kneeling in the dirt. Even if you're inside, you're gonna be rolling around on the floor. So dress for comfort. You wanna wear clothes that are easy to move in. On the other hand, your pets can dress for fun. Tip number two, get on eye level with your pets when you're taking pictures. You don't want to be looking down at them. That completely changes the perspective. So you want to get eye level with them. If you can't get low enough without laying flat on your belly, you might consider putting a smaller animal like maybe a chihuahua or a turtle or something up on uh, like a picnic table or an ottoman or, or a bench of some kind. But you want to get eye level with your pet to get the best pictures. Tip number three, focus on their eyes. Try and get the animal to look at the camera or move around so that you are looking directly into the animal's eyes. Eyes are the window to the soul. That's true for animals just like it is for people. If you get their eye in focused, you bring the, the picture to life and it just makes such a better image. So really focus on the eyes when you're taking pictures of your animals. Tip number four, you really have to have a lot of patience when you're taking pictures of animals. Um, you can't communicate with them as much as we like to, to think that they speak English. They don't. They don't understand English. So you can't really tell them what you want them to do. But if you're patient and you wait long enough, they're probably going to wind up doing what you want in their own good time. So you just need a lot of patience. Um, the first picture that you're going to see next is of a snake that I, I was babysitting and for some reason I was told to give it hot dogs. I know now not to do that. But I sat there for quite a while before that snake ate the hot dog, but it sure was a funny picture when I got it. So you have to have a lot of patience when you're taking pictures of animals.
tip number five is to keep a steady hand. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that my DSLR camera, I have a kit lens that came with it that has a stabilizer built into it. So it kind of compensates for, for a little bit of movement. But whether you have a stabilizer lens or not, every little bit of movement adds blur to your picture. So you really need to brace your, yourself. Um, I don't recommend using a tripod or even a monopod when you're taking pictures of animals because they move around so much. You need to be able to move around and pan with them. But if you can really practice locking your arms to your body and keeping a steady hand, your, your pictures are gonna come out much more clear no matter what kind of camera you're using. So use a steady hand. Tip number six is to move yourself. Um, if you're taking a picture of a, an animal and you don't like the angle or you don't like what's in the background, it's easier to take a step to the right or to the left than to try and get the animal to move because you can't really give them directions like you can people. And sometimes just a slight movement makes a huge difference. So don't be afraid to, to step to the right or to the left or, or move a lot or, or completely go around to the other side of the animal and get a different angle. You'll be amazed at how much it changes the image that you get in the end. So move yourself and, and get some better shots. Tip number seven, pay attention to what's in the background, what's going on behind your animal. You really want the best picture and you want the focus to be on your pet. So if you avoid uh, distractions in the background, you get better images. Again, if you move to the right or to the left or tilt the camera up or down, sometimes you can eliminate distractions in the background. So pay attention to backgrounds. Tip number eight, take pictures in the right light. The best time of day for taking pictures outdoors is early in the morning, you know, within a few hours of the sun coming up, or late in the evening, um, a couple of hours before the sun goes down. They call this the golden hours. If you can't uh, arrange your schedule to take pictures during those times of the day, um, cloudy days work really well or find a shady area if you're outside. If you're inside, natural light is best, so try and find um, a large window and get as much sunlight on the pet as you can. Of course, you can always set up studio lighting, but in my opinion, natural light is, is going to show off the, the personality of the pet better than anything else. So find the right light. Tip number nine, have an assistant. Although you can take pictures of animals when you're by yourself, it's easier if you have someone with you that can handle the animals. Um, if it's a child, that's even better because children and pets interact so well together. But your assistant can help the animal uh, direct their attention toward the camera. 
Uh, they can handle the animal while you're handling the camera and it just makes the job go easier. Plus having somebody else to uh, interact with with the animals just makes the whole thing a whole lot more fun. So have an assistant, that's a big help. Tip number 10, uh, having the ability to make weird noises really improves your photography when it comes to taking pet pictures. Uh, you can have like the little uh, squeaky toys or a whistle or make really weird, uh, I like to make mouse noises. The first time you do this with a new animal, their head kind of tilts to the side, which is a really cute shot. But making strange noises captures their attention and it makes them look toward the camera and you can get some really good shots that way. But you need to get good shots the first time because the novelty of it wears off very quickly and it stops being effective if you have to use it over and over again. Or, or you can just kind of keep coming up with different weird noises if you, <laughs> if you really like making sound effects. So weird noises draws the pet's attention to the camera. Tip number 11, toys and treats can be very uh, beneficial. They also can be disastrous. Um, of course, animals love treats, but if you don't have an assistant and you're the one handling the treats, just be prepared to have an animal all up in your camera. So um, with a little practice, you can learn to throw the treats away and as the animal comes back, uh, you can get really good shots of them coming back for more treats. Uh, toys are great too. Again, you can throw them. Um, like if you have a dog, you want to get pictures of them in the pool, you can throw a ball into the pool and get pictures as they come back out. So toys and treats can be helpful in directing where the animal goes and how they interact. Just be cautious with them because if you're not careful, you'll have slobber all over your camera. Tip number 12 mostly applies to the, um, the smartphone cameras. They use what's called digital zoom. And if you zoom in and, and take pictures, when you try and blow that up bigger to make a print, it's going to be kind of blurry because it's digitally enhanced. Um, cameras are getting better all the time and that's probably going to improve, but for now, try and avoid using the digital zoom on your phone camera. It's better to take a picture with the animal a little bit at a distance and crop it later. Um, with your DSLR camera, you should be fine using the zoom as long as you remember to have a steady hand. But avoid digital zoom on phone cameras. That'll help your pictures a whole lot. Number 13, um, don't be afraid to take what's called burst photos. That's where you just hold the shutter down and it takes multiple shots. Um, even smartphones have the feature where you can do burst photos. Um, I know most of the iPhones do. And if your phone doesn't have it, chances are you can download an app to allow it to do that. What burst photos does is allow you to pick out really good images. Um, animals move so quickly and the expressions on their face are so fleeting 
Uh, you might only get two out of every five shots that are really good, but by taking multiple images, you have a lot more to choose from. So it's worth it to take the first photos. On your DSLR camera, use the auto mode that is for sports. Um, that's the best mode to use. It will it will try and keep the focus. Um, it has um, multiple focus points, so it tries to keep the focus on the animal, and you just slowly pan the camera as you're holding down the shutter. So take burst photos. You'll get a lot of good images that way. Tip number 14, anticipate the action. It's true you can't read your animal's mind and some of them are so um, bouncy and all over the place it's hard to know where they're going. But oftentimes you can figure out where the animal's going next and if you go ahead and point your camera to where they're going to be, you're ready for the shot. So be ready to move with them and to get the shot for where they're going. So anticipate the action to get really good shots. Okay, last tip, number 15, and this has more to do with um, what taking pictures is all about. You need to print copies of your best pictures. Too often these days, we take pictures and we only leave them in digital forms, uh, either upload them to our social media or keeping them in our phone. And years down the road, we're going to really regret that because we're going to lose the phones or they're going to be outdated and we won't be able to, to retrieve those pictures. So about once a month or every two or three months, pick out some of your best shots, whether it's family portraits or pet portraits, and get them printed off in hard copies, something that's not going to go away just because technology changes. You need to keep pictures. Our animals are only with us for a short time, and we want to have something to hold on to when they're nothing more than a memory. So, you know, you need to print out your best shots. And I just want to say I appreciate y'all coming by. Uh, it's obvious that I love my animals and I love pet photography. And I've enjoyed being able to share these, these tips with you. And I really hope it helps you take some amazing photos of your pets. Y'all have a good day. And I'll see you next time.